25 baht six, how does it actually perform when compared against that short little 6.5 Creedmoor? I think you might be surprised. And if you don't like the 6.5 Creedmoor, you're going to probably be rooting for this 25 odd 6. Can't blame you. Um, and in some regards, it is a better cartridge than that 6.5 Creedmoor. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Hey, several years ago on ronspomeroutdoors.com, I wrote a blog about the 25-06. And the gist of it was, this is a great cartridge that suffers from one major flaw, obscurity. <laughs> Seriously, how many of us have had any experience with the 25-06? Probably not a lot. You just don't hear a lot about this cartridge, yet it's been around for a long, long time. What I want to do today is talk about the 25 Ot 6, a little bit of its history and what it does. And of course, we've got to compare it to somebody, and it's going to be the notorious 6.5 Creedmoor, that cartridge that everybody loves to hate or loves to love. But I think it's a fair comparison. Even though we're comparing, of course, the short action cartridge against the long action. That's a no-no. But it's quite valid because these are both producing some surprising ballistics that put them in the same ballpark. But for now, let's focus on the 25-06. The 25-06 is based on the 30-06 necked down. Let's just sit that down and look at it. You can see same length, same shoulder slope. All they did was neck it down from 30 caliber to 25. And most people would say, well, why didn't they just neck down the 270 Winchester? Wouldn't they have to squeeze it so far? That's because the 25 Ot 6 actually showed up before the 270 Winchester was born. <laughs> now, wait a minute. The 25 Ot 6 Remington became the 25 Ot 6 Remington in 1969. That was the year that Richard Nixon became the president. The man walked on the moon, Neil Armstrong, walked on the moon for the first time. And there was Woodstock. And one of the big hit songs back then was Sugar, Sugar by the Archies, which that was weird. If you could remember that one, you can remember the 25 odd six. But what am I talking about it being older than the 270? Because the 270 Winchester came out in 1925. So how can this be? Well, this was a wildcat way back in 1912 or 15. Charles Newton took that 30 out 6 and necked it down to 25. But at the same time, he shortened it to create the 250 3000 Savage. Well, a few years later... Um, Adolf Needner looked at that 30 out 6 and that 25 or 250 and necked this thing down without changing the length, thinking with more powder he was going to get more velocity. That became the 25 Needner. I don't know if he pronounced it Needner or Neidner, but it's spelled N I E D N E R, I believe. You can look him up. But these were some of the old cartridge designers back in the day. That thing hung around for all those years from 1920 until 1969 before anybody made it official. Remington finally woke up and did it. And I think what happened was the early powders were a little bit too fast to really take advantage of all that capacity. That's why those shorter 25s like the 257 Roberts and uh, that 250 3000 Savage, which later just became shortened to the 250 Savage, were really popular in the middle of the century. 25-06 lagged until excess military powders from cannons became available. They actually took the, the bullets off the end of these cannon cartridges, poured the powder out, and you had some 4350 and uh, 4831. Those were slower burning, could push larger, heavier bullets a little more efficiently in that big case, and the 25-06 came into its own. So, there's your basic history on that 25-06. Precedes the 270 as a wildcat, um, but didn't become an actual official cartridge you could buy off the shelves until 1969. It became known as a great varmint round. It was kind of designed with lighter bullets for shooting 
woodchucks and coyotes and prairie dogs and things like that. And back in those days, there were a lot of varmints around on a lot of the farms and homesteads and stuff. So people needed something that could reach out and take care of the problems. If there's a fox hanging around or a coyote, 25-06 could reach a little bit farther than some of the 22s that were around in those days. And remember, that preceded the 24 calibers. Those didn't come along until the 1950s, about 1955 when they really picked up. So... It was a great round, but by the time they introduced it as a factory cartridge in 69, I think it was maybe a little bit too late because by then the 270 was well established. We had some 6.5s in that 264 Winchester Magnum and the 6.5 Remington, I think, was already out by then. So eh, 257 Roberts had been around a long time. There just didn't seem to be a real demand for it. So it never exactly exploded like that 6.5 Creedmoor did. And it could have been the marketing. But there's our cartridge, 25-06. How does it actually perform when compared against that short little 6.5 Creedmoor? Well, we're going to look at some numbers, of course. I've made some uh, trajectory charts. And when we look at those, we will see what the similarities and differences are. And I think you might be surprised. And if you <laughs> don't like the 6.5 Creedmoor, you're going to probably be rooting for this 25-06. Can't blame you. Um, and in some regards, it is a better cartridge than that 6.5 Creedmoor. And I'm talking ballistically here. I don't care what the shape is. We're looking at a cartridge that's used for pronghorn hunting and whitetail hunting and mule deer hunting. Um, both of those are used for that. Sometimes elk hunting, neither ones I would call a top-notch elk cartridge, but by golly, they're both used and used successfully for elk. So let's just look at what makes one better than the other in some regards and vice versa. So we'll get the papers out. We'll look at the charts. A uh, quick little rundown on this 6.5 Creedmoor. Obviously, you can see it's a short action cartridge. And it sprang essentially from the 308. Now, the sticklers are going to say, no, it was 30TC. Well, yeah, the 30TC was made by working off the 308 in the first place. And then the 308 was worked off the 300 Savage. And that was probably come off of the 7x57 Mauser. They're all related. So it's no big deal. But you can see how close these are. The same head size, short actions, just a little bit uh, longer neck on this one. That enables it to have a longer bullet reaching out to the maximum length here. That's where its efficiency comes in. And really what the Creedmoor does that makes it so darn effective and popular is that it's built with one and eight inch twist rifling in almost all the rifles that are chambered for it. And that's one of the big problems that the uh, 25-06 has. It is not. That guy was built back in the days when they were shooting 85, 87 grain bullets in it, up to 100, and then they would push it eventually up to 120 grain. But they just didn't think it was ever going to have big, long bullets because back in those days, there were almost no big, long bullets. So their twist rate in that 25 about 6 is pretty much stabilized at 1 in 10, sometimes 1 in 9 in some rifles. Not quite fast enough to stabilize the long, high BC bullets, and that's where the 6.5 Creedmoor begins to take over at longer distances. So let us now look at some of those numbers and ballistic charts and find out how well that 25-06 stacks up. And if you're one of the 6.5 Creedmoor haters, maybe you can consider getting a 25-06 instead and showing up all your friends who are shooting the 6.5 Creedmoor. Let's go to the tail of the tape. So here are where we start to see the big differences between the 25-06 and that 6.5 Creedmoor. It basically comes down to the length of the bullets they can shoot. Obviously, you've got your short action versus long, so there's more powder in that 25-06 it should be able to handle bigger bullets. But look what we've got. They'll start at about 75 grains and they move up to 120. And that's about it. Because the old one in 10 twist rates that are in most rifles just won't stabilize a bullet much longer than about 120 grains. Now they do have one on the market now. It's 131 grain Ace Blackjack, but you have to have a special seven and a half inch twist barrel on it. So you're going to have to rebarrel to get that. But man, when we do that, we get some pretty impressive ballistics. And we'll look at that in a bit. But of course, the Creedmoor, the big reason it is so popular is because it was tailored for those extremely long high BC bullets from the get-go. So it will start with a 95 grain bullet. 
and run all the way up to 150. And there's even a 160 grain round nose that it'll stabilize because the round nose, of course, is shorter. But now let's look at the actual ballistics. Here is our trajectory chart. We have our drops and drifts in energy. So the drops are in green, drift in black. The remaining energy is in red. And they're at 300 yards, 400 yards, 600 yards. MPBR stands for maximum point blank range. That means on an eight inch diameter target, if you aim at the center, your bullet is not going to fly above that eight inch circle or drop below that until your maximum point blank range, which is 350 for this 25 watt six load. So I tried to find the highest BC, most efficient bullets I could for each of these. And this is what I came up with. 115 grain VLD from Berger for the 25 out 6 at 3,150 feet per second. And most people are familiar with that Creedmoor with 143 grain. That is the ELDX from Hornady. It has an incredibly high BC 625, but it's not all that fast. The Creedmoor is not that fast of a cartridge. It gains its fame and its performance from those high BC bullets. They just resist air drag and retain so much energy downrange and resist drifting in the wind or being deflected by the winds. That's its real claim to fame. So you can see they're awfully close despite all that. And uh, they actually get less drop with that 25 on 6. A lot of it. Look at the difference out there at 600 yards. It's huge. But the wind advantage for the... Creedmoor is not all that much, just two inches. Now you've got a little bit more energy remaining in that big heavier bullet, 143 to 115. But by golly, that 25 out 6, I think is really holding its own. I would not be afraid to use that out to 400 yards. I rarely shoot at game any farther than that. But some people do if they're experts at it and they've got the right conditions. I think the... Uh, 600 yard energy of over a thousand is going to be plenty for pronghorn and deer and uh, I would shoot an elk with the right bullet but it gets a little bit iffy for a lot of folks. I'm certainly not recommending you buy this as the ideal elk cartridge but it can work and it's been used a lot out in the west. Now I want to see what the uh, 25 out 6 can do if it can get its BC up. We're going to go to that ace bullet with a higher BC. Let me slide this up so we can see that. Yeah, don't run away from us here, Creedmoor. I know you like to move, but not that much. Now, if this is straight enough, you can see it. Look what happens if we get our BC up. 6.43 is even higher than the 6.543. But of course, more weight, so we're not gonna go as fast. But look at how much faster we're going than that Creedmoor can go. And the result is, superior performance all the way around. Less drift, less drop, more energy. We've got ourselves a winner. And that's what I was saying earlier about needing to get the twist rate up on that 25 out 6. You have to have a really fast twist barrel about one and seven and a half. Seven and a half inches, one complete twist. You're going to stabilize that incredible 131 grain bullet. So I think this is the future for the 25 out 6. I hope someone grabs it. Now, here is a similar comparison with weights. If you'd like to look at the same weight in a cartridge, 131, 129, pretty darn close. But again, you can see who's winning that race. So this is really what it's all about, guys. It's the powder capacity of the cartridge versus the combination of the bullet weight and its ballistics coefficient. Those things taken together determine performance. Now let's look at one more quick little chart, which is with the lighter bullets for folks who are interested in a long range varmint round. And this is an extremely long range, but let's just slide it in there and take a look. So I call this my fur and varmint load. If you like to harvest nature's surplus fur, on coyotes and foxes and whatnot at long range, here are a couple of good options. 25 out 6 with a 75 grain VMAX bullet. You can see your BC at 290. Compare that to the Creedmoor with a 95 grain. It's about as light a bullet as you're going to find in that. You look at your BC suffers a lot, but it's still better than the 25 out 6s. And your velocities are way different. That 25 out 6 is a real screamer, and you can see that in the drops. It only drops an inch and a half at 300 yards. Now, on this one, I used a much smaller um, 
target's diameter for the maximum point blank range. It's only five inches. So your bullet was not is not going to rise more than two and a half inches above center aim on a five inch circle, and it's not going to drop until 350 yards, 315 yards with the 25 odd six, 283. So you can see the 25 odd six is definitely a better maximum point blank range for cartridge than the 6.5 Creedmoor. But again, the Creedmoor carries more energy downrange, doesn't drift as as much in the wind but not much difference. Look at that, a half inch at 300 yards. You really can just discount it inside of that. So if you're shooting most of your fur inside of 300 yards, I don't think you can pick one over the other one unless you really worried about your drops, but still, that's awfully close too. Hey, your choice, guys. Uh, those are sort of the, the ballistics. You've got a lot of potential in both of these cartridges, but I think the 25-06 is still looking for its heyday. It has a lot to gain with some new bullets, whereas the Creedmoor is already pretty much maxed out. So start hand loading, get yourself a fast twist barrel, pick up that 131 grain bullet, and you're already rolling. And then Rattle the cages of our gun and ammo manufacturers and tell them to let's uh, bring that 25 bot sex into the 21st century because I think it's an extremely useful and worthy cartridge. There you go, 25 bot six lovers. You've got a cartridge to take home. Well, that's the story on the 25 bot six, a great cartridge that really hasn't come into its own yet. We need to get longer bullets and, of course, faster twist barrels to handle them. But once we do that, that 25-06 could really shine. It could become one of the better cartridges out there in our arsenal. So thanks for watching. Um, if you want to read about the 25-06 in detail, you can go to ronspomeroutdoors.com and look for my old blog on that topic. Just do a search for 25-06 Remington versus a 6.5 Creedmoor. And if you have any questions, I invite you to join us at our Patreon community where I answer questions and give advice on ballistics and rifles and all of the stuff we cover here on this YouTube channel. You can also find us at Facebook and Instagram at Ron Spomer Outdoors. So until we meet again, this is Ron Spomer signing off with his usual, Hunt Honest, Shoot Straight. Mm -hmm.